Welcome back and I hope you and your family are well. What we're going to talk about today is energy and different types of energy. Now if you think about it, when you say you've got no energy, you're probably lying around not doing much. You don't have the ability to kind of do anything. You talk about, I lack energy. And in physics, energy is a very specific thing. It's the ability to do things, to do work. And energy shows itself up in different ways. Things can do different things. A light bulb can light up, but a car can move. So what I want to do now is I want to tell you a little bit about what energy is, what we measure energy in, and the types of energy that we see in physics situations. So we're going to look at energy. Now, a person who knew a great deal about this was a chap called James Joule. So he's been really lucky. He's had the unit of energy named after him. So we're going to measure energy for our physics at the moment in joules. And if ever we want to abbreviate that word, we'll just use the letter J. OK, so I said that things can do stuff. What sort of things can they do? Well, um, the first one to think about is when you guys come rushing into the classroom and you're screaming and shouting, you have the ability to give out sound energy. It's my favourite at school because I was really interested in music and recording and things, so I was always thinking about sound energy. Uh, but the other thing you do when you rush into the classroom is you move a lot and you move the chairs around and things like that. And movement energy goes under the rather complicated name of kinetic kinetic energy um, or kinetic energy and sometimes we can't be bothered to write that so we just write ke so kinetic energy but what if you lift something really high and stick it on a shelf and then suddenly boom it falls back down again it sat there for a while it had the potential to fall OK, so the energy was stored in it. It was potential energy, but it's right up here. Some people call it um, uphill energy, but more correctly, we're going to call it gravitational potential energy. And we'll abbreviate that to GPE for the time being. So we don't have to keep saying gravitational potential energy. Now, I couldn't give this lesson as I am in this uh, old retro way um, without the light and my projector on. So this is giving out light energy. It's not stored. It's not stored in the projector. So it's not potential energy. It's just light energy. And um, it's a bit noisy. It has a little bit of a noisy fan motor on it. And that fan, I can hear it. So that's the sound energy. But what it's doing is it's blowing air over the lamp in here that gives out light, but the lamp also gives out heat energy. Uh, some people like correctly to call that thermal energy. Oh, hang on, it's not, it wouldn't work if um, I didn't turn it on, so it must be getting a supply of electrical energy. Now, if it ran off batteries, those batteries would have to have a lot of chemicals in them. So they would have stored in them chemicals waiting to do something. So they would have chemical potential energy. So chemical potential energy is another one that's stored until you actually want to use it. So if you think about it, lots of devices have energy going into them and have energy that's converted and comes out of them and it will be at least one from this list. So um, in my next video what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to show you some devices and I'm going to ask you what are the energy transfers and you have to think about which form of energy is going in so my projector has got electrical energy coming into it and what's the main type of energy that it's designed to give out. This is designed to give out light. It also gives out a little bit of sound and quite a lot of heat, but it's not meant to do that. So what it's doing is wasting some of the electrical energy we put into it. 
So I just nipped off there to get something because I actually wanted to show you this one. Um, here's a spring. And uh, this stores yet another form of energy. Um, you probably don't think about springs so much, but um, maybe a girl's hair tie um, or um, an elastic band. And when you stretch those, or in fact compress them, you're storing energy in them. And you're storing that energy in the form of elastic, stored elastic potential energy. So a spring or an elastic material stores elastic potential energy. Now, uh, some people call that elastic strain energy, which is equally as good. Um, so you'll hear different names used, but there's a pretty good list of how energy shows itself. Now, I do want to say it's really quite important um, that there aren't different uh, types of energy. All energy is the same. All energy is in joules, but it kind of pops its head up in different ways. Sometimes the energy comes out in the form of sound, and sometimes something moves and the energy comes out in the form of kinetic energy. So, have a good look at the list of different types of energy, see if you can remember their names, and see if you can separate the ones that are stored, potential energy, and the ones that are in action, actually doing stuff, ones that aren't forms of potential energy. So I'll take a quick photograph of what's on the board. I know it's a, a bit uh, handwritten, but at least you can see a bit more clearly uh, the notes that I made this lesson. So a quick lesson, that one, much quicker than we'd normally have at school when we'd obviously, uh, I'd talk to you and ask you questions. But I hope you now know a little bit more about energy, what units it's in, and the places that you see energy appear. So I think what we need to do for another lesson is do some practical work, I, I get to do it, and I'm gonna get you to think about what are the energies going into the system and what are the energies coming out? What are the energy transfers? So I hope you found that useful, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.